this is not a debate, but I did want to to kind of give that other perspective that there is a positive movement. And it's young people. It's young people coming back early. It's not people coming back to the time. anything about patriotism of the typical african what are the lines between the survival instinct that is natural to all humans and the need to see the bigger picture of repairing our nations christabel um thank you thank you very much for the question i think um it was great to see the data that ladi uh, provided because data is always important um but i think he ended on the right notes which is that what he showed doesn't tell the whole story because there's also a positive migration story out there and i like to focus actually on the positive side of things um you know it's a very very good question about patriotism because if you look at the african stories if you want to bunch it um by countries you saw independence around the 60s ghana started uh, first sub saharan africa from 57 and then you had a whole slew of, of countries after that and what we found there is a, a crop of people who were extremely patriotic, right? Um, you move forward to, I would say about the 80s, depending on the country, 70s, 80s, you had a group of people who were patriotic, all right, but economics became a big deal to them for various reasons, from the coup d'etats to uh, economic crisis around the time and all of that. And it caused a major um, uh, migration out of the continent, right? Then you come fast forward to, I'll say, another 20 years, early 2000s, you actually see another set of Africans who are way less patriotic on, on the whole, right? Because they were, for the most part, either not born or were babies during the um, independence movement. So they don't have that feel that maybe their parents and grandparents have. And they met their parents who were focusing primarily on economic gain, right? So they also, when they, when they can, leave. What you find differently in that last subset, and I like to focus on that, is they came back home different than their parents. So you have parents who stayed abroad, Germany, USA, and the like, all their lives, some people have been died out there or would come back home late retirement towards the end of their life when their lives, when they're very limited in productivity, some may come and volunteer their, their um, skill set and all of that, but not as much. But then you come to these 2000s and going forward and then you see a movement. Now that movement happened some intentionally. And I think this is where Ladi is right, is that it needs to be intentional, whether it's going out or coming in. Going out became a thing because our globe became a little bit more connected, in my opinion. And so if you had the means, you could go. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not taking out the very true stories of people who leave and go across the Libyan uh, deserts and all of this stuff to just so they reach Europe. That group exists, it's real, and it's not a good thing and countries need to look into how to fix that but there is a big focus now on the positive migration and the positive return and i think a lot of countries are really focusing in on it what you find is that because africa does have the potential the positive return is happening more often with younger people but it's because of certain things that are different a decade ago, maybe two decades ago, a young person couldn't come and lead an organization. And I'll use Ghana as an example because I know it very closely. You found in the 2000s, um, 2010 going on, when the US economic crisis hit and hit hard, that when young people were fired from their jobs on Wall Street and they had no choice and needed to return home, they return home, but here they are running the telcos across the continent, running the finance systems, the investment banks. So people actually realize that there is something here for us, right? 
And the, the truth is, once you come home, you may have a focus that is economic. But for the most part, you also find yourself solving problems that you can't solve abroad or you can't make such a difference abroad as much as you could at home that the patriotism turns up to some extent. That being said, there are all real frustrations. There are political turnovers. There's, you know, all these issues of economic downturns that make it difficult to make that decision to one, come home and make the decision to two, stay. And I think that's where, you know, the, the, the diaspora movement becomes very important. I like to look at it honestly past remittances. I think remittances tells an interesting story, but for the diaspora, it's way more than remittances. It's human capital. It is who we are, what we've learned, the new people we've become. And that is what needs to be turned around to what we can give back to the continent. Let me stop here. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. The human capital aspect. And you've said so much uh, in that period. And I, I picked up from the 2000s, we have a whole bunch of professionals returning because they had acquired capacity to make a world of difference in their homelands. And they saw that there are opportunities to make the kind of impact they can make, they could make in their homeland that they probably will not be able to make out there. Maybe because uh, it wouldn't be because they had stronger skills among those who were born in those countries, or those who are born in those countries had better opportunities and on all that. So basically, I, I get that part. So uh, essentially, you would call that patriotism, the, the willingness to return. Absolutely. It is it is not a it is not a decision. I mean, some people just make the decision because it sounds cool. But to be okay. very honest with you, when you're living in the West, when you pay your bills and things work, you don't just get up in the morning and leave. Right. Um, but I also you know, the truth also is being a foreigner is tough. It's yeah. a fact, you know, you you find people who are thriving. But is that the story for everybody? Right. So then now that people are realizing that there's many opportunities to be innovative on the continent, returning home becomes a real option. OK, so patriotism, not uh, being opportunistic. Right. It's 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 it, you're seeing it more positively like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, and some people yeah. can be both, to be honest, okay. you, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, I think I've learned that a lot more by uh, being affiliated with a, a number of people who are more on the business side. I'm a development worker, so I tend to look mm -hmm. at things at that angle. But people who are business people, think about it. An entrepreneur who moves home and opens up a technology hub, as an example. What do they do? They're making money because technology now is making money, but they're hiring people. What is that? Giving back to your country. So it's really yeah. the way you yeah. look at it. So about people returning, uh, the World Bank says that 85 of percent of Africans and be, and below $5.5 a day. So the middle, upper middle class about 15%. And we find out that those who have gone abroad, uh, maybe like yourself, maybe like Ladi and others and say, okay, I mean, there's so much opportunity in Africa. And, and someone who has never been abroad is asking himself, you're saying that because you've had the opportunity. You're saying that because, I mean, I, I want to come and say the story too. I want to leave so that I can tell the same story in reality. So what do you think about that? Uh, an African desperate is saying that, look, uh, you, you, you can say that because when you come back, the government of Ghana gives you a special place to live in. You don't have to live amongst and all that. I mean, what do you think? Is, is that the reality or uh, are you still convinced that, I mean, coming home is is a good thing to do go ahead no so 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 kenneth the, the reality is that you know i'm a qualitative researcher so i like to tell stories and the stories are very different for different people but i've always said to my friends that if i had a lot of money the first thing i'll do is put an empty plane at kotoka international airport in accra and get all youth who will fit into that plane to leave right and what I'll do is I'll take them to the U.S., which I know, which is where I lived for a long time. I will take them to Wisconsin, which has snow like three quarters of the year. I'll take them in February, when it's the, one of the most difficult times to be there. And then I'll leave them there, right? Because the reality is that everybody needs to see from themselves. So I really take to heart what you're saying, which is that people say, because you've been, 
and so you don't want somebody to go why a lot of people don't tell the truth about that 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 immigration what did they go and do you know folks will go and you know do all sorts of manual labor that they would never do in their home country work for 20 years and then the first time they show up home they're in gold chains with the mercedes benz and truth you earned it i give it to you but is that the true story of the immigration there's that group there's also the group like me who went to school i went to the us for school i didn't go to i didn't go to go work right i did end up working and all of that on the side to make a different uh, to to make a, a living um stay afloat and and all of that right and then i actually did a few jobs before i actually came home that's my story now for me yes for a lot of the people who returned home they would be treated as expats but why not mm. if expats you know if foreigners in in in, in are treated a certain way why can't uh Guineans or africans be treated that way as well so there isn't something wrong with it what you can say is there may be something wrong with the system that sets things up that way and that is where governance comes in and some of what Ladi had said at the very beginning about what types of leadership do we have and what does it mean that is where we have the problems is that systems need to be set up so that people who are home and for whatever reason decide they're going to stay home have the same opportunity as people who've decided to leave and come back and have you know have the same opportunity as expats because that is a system uh, systemic discussion that I am I'm willing to have and a challenge that I think needs to change. That being said, you have American friends who would come home. Just yesterday I was having a conversation with some friends who came home and she one lady was comparing herself to her sister. She lives the the lady I'm talking about lives in, in the US in the East Coast and you know doing very well pretty pretty okay. And then she comes home and she's talking about the the life we Ghanaians are living comparing to her sister's house, what is in the house, the number of cars, all of the stuff. And she's like, my God, there really is something here. And that's the reality. Mm. Yes, for only a small proportion, let's be real. Let's not, let's not distort the yep. story, um, but it is possible. And, and that is what I like to focus in on is telling our story and being able to tell that positive story to demonstrate that it is possible for more people to come. Because the reality is, brain gain couldn't be better why don't we try and work our way towards getting more of the brains that we've had abroad home there is a place for everybody there's a place for the Guinean or the African who's never left there's a place for the one who went and decided themselves to patriotically to come home and then there's a place for the person who will never come you know remittances so there's a story to tell across all of it and yeah. I think that they can be there is for us to take a look at each version and see how we can turn it into a positive story. Just about I think it's, 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 it's a little bit of both. That's the true story. Um, like I said, we were talking before we got started. I don't think everybody should come home. You know, mm -hmm. there are some people that, you know, they go and it's their place there. They get better opportunity, better life because the system setup allows them to do that. And theirs is to give money back home. You know, as, as we all know, remittance dollars, you know, it's not even the true story. There's a lot more that is being is not being recorded in terms of what comes back home. So there's an e mm -hmm. e extremely economic gain. Um, in 2020, Ghana's remittances during COVID-19 shot up by 5%. So that tells you that there's a big economic gain there. But there's also, like I mentioned before, an even bigger gain when you bring back your human capital when you actually immerse yourself in the society to make a difference, right? Um, and so the key becomes, how do we harness this? People are doing so well in agribusiness, in technology, in you know development spaces, in, in neuroscience, across the gamut in terms of, of areas, Africa is thriving. So why should we let non-Africans thrive in Africa? We should come back and make a and make a difference ourselves. Be a part of the the real story. Thank you. is doing but before then i struggle a little bit with bloody stance because um i'll be the first to say yes we have systems that are broken 
or we have systems that can be improved, right? There's no doubt about that. But governments are paying for students to leave their home countries from the continent. It's happening, right? So I think we should be careful in some of these comparisons um, that the, that's happening. Ghana just launched in 2019 the, the return home, the year of return, and now Beyond the Return is underway, and it's bringing in tons and scores of tourism. We cannot say it's not happening. It is happening. Why are we not giving the examples? Yes, you can say all you want about Ghana's um, currency, which is an unfortunate situation that is happening to us now. But can we talk about Ghana and how we responded to the COVID crisis and did so well? Can you go and talk about how Rwanda is running its economy? There's good examples on this continent, and I think it's important for us to focus in. Now, I also want us to also take a look at what is working well and what is not working well. So when you bunch Africa together, it gets a little bit difficult. India is a country, let's not forget that. And I think it's really important because people listening to us may not have the kind of skills and the kind of um, access that we have. So when we're telling the stories, I think it's really important for us to give that context. What is Ahaspra doing? Ahaspra was birthed from this dynamism, this patriotism that says we can make a difference. You know, it, it's a group of young Africans. We started in, in 2011 with 12 people, and today we have more than 3,000 people in our database, and then many, many more in our network system. What are we doing together? We're supporting each other's return process, helping each other find jobs, helping each other find housing, helping each other find the human capital that Ladi talks about and he's absolutely right about. I think I, I touched on that as well. That in the end, forget remittances. Human capital is key. I, I will forever be on the stance that there is something special about coming and being a part of the change movement. And if you haven't experienced it, I encourage you to do it. It doesn't matter if there's just a few of us. It's actually not just a few of us. It's been a massive goal. I think we need to do better with data. And this is something I complain about all the time in terms of understanding our numbers. And some of it's tough because some of it is short term, right? Somebody may come home for two years, give their all and then head back out for whatever reason, right? Somebody may also come and never return. And both of them or even both of them are going to make a difference in different ways. Some The shorter one may even make a difference bigger, right? Um, the truth is there is growth here. This is the richest part of the world, fact. So if you're going to make a difference, you can stay in, you know, abroad in the Western world, or you can come back home with the education you gain as a global citizen. The globe is getting closer and closer together. So it makes you actually, we have this term we call global. The global person, global and local is actually your best bet in terms of you know, what, what you can achieve. The sky's the limit for somebody who understands what is happening on the ground because they are from the ground. And then the person who also has that global perspective, they've learned the mistakes, they understand the global culture, and there's a major, major role for us to play that could be very positive. And so I will push in a day, but I did want to, to kind of give that other perspective that there is a positive movement and it's young people. It's young people coming back early. It's not people it's coming back to retire. Good, well and good. The opportunity exists. I, I think actually, and I'll end on this, one of our biggest problems is the best people are not joining government. Culturally, mm. we have this thing that government is dirty and I, I include it, I'm just, just saying like it is, you know, <clears throat> when we can start saying that let's be a part of the solution, you know that if you can beat us, join us. When we join, I think we'll really be able to make a difference for our countries and this continent that I, we all If I look in, I would want any young African child, girl or boy, to go abroad. Everybody should go abroad. There is so much I have learned as a person by traveling in not just one country that I stayed in. I've worked in many countries and I've been to almost 40 countries across the globe. And every time I go, I gain things that I improve my person, improve my perspective to life, improve my professional goals and, and everything. It's it's just an amazing place out there. So everybody as possible, and that should be our goal on this side of the world, should have the opportunity to go back. But we should make it a point to also encourage everybody to come back similarly, whether it is for a lifetime, for a minute, for a second, for a visit, 
it is also important to know your roots, to appreciate it, to understand your history and to give back. Thank you very much.